Hello and welcome to my video series of MolBio Explained in 3 minutes where I explain a concept of molecular biology in less than 3 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Today we are going to talk about gateway cloning technology which is a site specific recombination based cloning system and this is based on how phage integrates its DNA in the E. coli chromosome. So this reaction has two steps. Step 1 also known as BP clonase reaction and step 2 also known as LR clonase reaction and these steps are very similar to the way a E. coli a phage integrates its DNA and excises its DNA from the E. coli genome so it's kind of like a in vitro version of this phenomena now let's get back to conventional cloning system where we use plasmid then we restriction digest that plasmid to integrate our gene of interest with a ligation reaction but many a times this reaction fails and we always scratch our head to understand what has gone wrong so is there a better way to do it of course yes using LR and BP clonase reaction things can be simpler and more efficient so in order to understand gateway cloning we need to understand how a phage virus Integ integrates its DNA inside E. coli. So after infection, the phage DNA integrates into the E. coli chromosome with the help of a site-directed recombination. Phage DNA has ATTP sites, whereas the E. coli chromosome has ATTB sites, and they can recombine with each other. And that is how phage DNA integrates with the E. coli genome while excising out. Similar kind of site specific reaction is used by the phage virus. Now, scientists thought whether they can use this kind of strategy in a cloning method. And of course, that's the birth point of gateway cloning. The first reaction is known as BP clonase reaction, where we add BP clonase. And in this particular reaction, we have our gene of interest flanked by particular recombination site then we have our donor vector then we have our bp clonase enzyme when we add all of these together the gene of interest which is flanked by att b sites gets integrated into the donor vector with the help of site directed recombination then we perform the lr clonase step where we add lr clonase destination vector and the donor vector now, the gene of interest is going to be transformed from the donor vector into the destination vector. So here is our donor vector with gene of interest flanked by ATT L sites. And here is our destination vector with ATT R sites. Again, these two sites can perform site-directed recombination. And that is how the destination vector would get the gene of interest. Pretty simple and less time consuming. Lastly, these destination vector has to be integrated inside competent E. coli cells to get recombinant colonies. And this step is very simple and conventional transformation reaction has to be performed where competent cells would be combined with these uh, plasmids and ultimately incubated on ice for kind of like 15 minutes, then followed by a heat shock we would incubate it in an ice again and then plate this on a petri plate. So after inoculation and incubation overnight, we should be seeing some recombinant colonies and that's it. We should have our gene of interest inside these recombinant colonies which we can check by colony PCR. So now you learn how gateway cloning work. The advantages of gateway cloning are the following. It maintains the reading frame, directionality is men maintained, no restriction, no ligation, only recombination. The restriction, the reaction takes place within an hour and the efficiency is more than 90%. So as per a tagline, we can say cloning becomes as easier as breathing. So, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to check out all my playlists in this channel. And if you like my videos, please share it with your friends. You can also follow me on in Instagram or Facebook. Thanks for listening. Thank you.